Okay, good evening um, everyone. Uh, I thought I'd just do a quick video um, of uh, my proposed kiln enclosure. Uh, the idea is I'm going to try and build uh, a glass fusing kiln. Um, I, I looked at kilns online uh, or you know commercially available kilns and to be quite honest I found the uh, price is quite obscene um, considering what the kiln is, well, yeah, exactly what it is, it's just a insulated box with effectively a heater and a uh, PID controller. So um, anyway, this box became available at work. Um, it's aluminium, <laughs> which obviously may not be the best material for a kiln, um, but it's, yeah, it's aluminium and uh, it was originally a type of RF uh, enclosure or uh, RF study enclosure for putting uh, radio equipment in. Um, it was going to be scrapped. It's not perfect, but uh, it's not a bad box. Um, so uh, I've taken all the all the uh, guts out of it um, that was for its original purpose. And also before I start actually building the kiln, I thought I'd give a quick once round of the box. So, like as I say, it's, it's aluminium. I'll get a bit closer. Um, what I've done is I've um, it's got a we've got a door here, which was part of the original enclosure. At the moment, it's not got a hinge. It's got a bit of gaffer tape. This would, I was hoping I could use this possibly as an observation door um, at some point. Line it and then um, be able to see into the see into the kiln. So there's that. Um, it's got quite a few little holes on it here, here and there, but nothing that can't be just sort of blanked out. Um, these are the main sort of fixing. It's extremely well made. It's very heavy. Say it's made of aluminium. It's got to be, whew, I don't know, 10 mil thick. So, um, not another quite nice feature about it was it had a die cast aluminium control box already mounted on the side of it that was used for um, controlling its original functionality. Uh, I sort of stripped it out again. There's a few little holes here. That I can blank out, but this so this can this this is this can house the um, kiln controller and various switches and bits and bobs that uh, that need to be done. Um, <coughs> sides blank. Didn't have a top, so what I've done is I've uh, the plan is I'm going I've the camera is as zoomed out as it will go. Um, I'm going to line the inside of this box with uh, 64 mil deep ceramic fire brick they're not your usual sort of bricks as in house bricks they, they're, they're larger than that so I'll, I'll need a basically two bricks per face um, and this tape here marks that this in the inside of this tape here marks out my usable my usable kiln area which is approximately 350 mil by 220 mil by pretty much as as deep as I want it because the box is pretty deep so I'll probably um, pack, pack the base of the box out with uh, with fire brick um, and then there will be a, a fire brick lid which will will come down and, uh, and, and mate with the uh, with the brick liner with maybe some um, fire wool as a, as a as a as an interface between the two brick layers the lids gonna be the trickiest part I'm planning on heating it from the top so the, the, the lid construction will have to have the heater uh, mounted up underneath. Um, I've got some plans for that and I think I, I, think I can work out, I've, I've worked out how to do that. So the idea would be um, that the, 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 whole, the whole lid is going to hinge down onto the, onto the top and as you say there'll be a, 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 probably a two kilowatt element in the, in the base of the lid. Um, that's the plan. The controller, bear with me one moment. Bear with me. This is the uh, controller I'm planning on using. This is um, an Altec PC410 multi channel, multi sequence uh, PID based uh, temperature controller. So you can have up to uh, 10 programs. Uh, each eight sequences or each segment eight segments long with a programmable um, ramp uh, set point and dwell time so that's quite neat that pretty much does everything I think you need to do it also has a, a self calibration or a learning mode um, so 
once everything's been set up in the kiln, obviously because the temperature characteristics will be different for this kiln compared with any other, any other you can put this, this controller into its self-learning mode and it will run a sequence of tests on the enclosure and derive its own PID values which, which will, will be optimised for this particular kiln, this particular enclosure. Here's the, um, that's the thermocouple, K-type thermocouple, um, 1300, 1400 degrees top temperature. Works fine, I've powered this up, it all works really well. Run some sequences, it's really easy to program. You can select the program, press start, away it goes. So uh, yeah, so that's the controller and that will then, that will, the controller will then sit in here, so I'll, I'll cut a, cut a slot in here, drop the controller in, then I'll have a, a main power switch, I'll have a run hold switch, so I can, I can either uh, set the controller running or put it into a hold mode, a stop button which will stop the controller dead in its tracks, uh, also an uh, electrical cutout which is on, on the primary side so if anything goes pear shaped um, the cutout will trip. Um, there's also so that yeah so the the PID controller just simply controls a, I've got a, a 40 amp uh, solid state relay which will switch the uh, switch the power to the element yeah so that's pretty much it so I've uh, I've got everything I've got the controller got the box got all the other electrical equipment I need um, got some high high uh, temperature cables and some um, some metal flex to link this control box with the little control box which will sit on the lid. Uh, the only thing I don't have because it's almost Christmas and it's closed is the fire brick lining. But I'm planning on taking the actual box down to the supplier. They seem they seem very friendly and knowledgeable. Um, and take the take the box down and, and get maybe get some advice on uh, the final choice of brick, fire brick, insulation ceramic wool and also bonding materials to sort of stick the whole thing together but um, yeah so hopefully as long as the uh, interior, interior temperature doesn't leak to the aluminium which melts at 640 degrees it should stay solid anyway so this is a uh, first of a few videos probably and uh, hopefully for about a hundred and twenty odd pounds I should be able to build a nice little jewelry fusing kiln and me and my daughter can uh, fuse some jewellery and um, she can have a little stand at the school fair. Anyway, so uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.